Hi, welcome to the fourth of our series on the mathematics of evolution. We're going to be talking about game strategies and games that test the social nature of animal behavior. Well, what have we discovered so far? Uh, first, we studied about population growth, and we particularly came up with the replicator equation with a growth rate uh, set by the fitness of the animals. And we would take a population of animals, depending on their fitness, uh, there would be a replication based on that fitness level. And it would create a new uh, population, population n plus 1, which would become the working population for the next iteration. And around and around we go. Well, we might ask the question, what sets the fitness? And uh, what we've come up with is that a contest does, a game. Uh, this essentially creates the entire system model of evolution for our mathematics. And what we see here is that we see uh, a feedback loop with high degree of positive feedback, which means that it has ex explosive growth. Well, the, the growth of populations is explosive. And the controlling element in this feedback loop is the game and that will drive the population, the, the nature of the game will drive the population toward its eventual end. The first game that we studied was the game of Hawk Dove and that's a contest for a shareable resource. If you remember the Hawk strategy is the strategy of a fighter and the Dove strategy is to avoid fights uh, completely but share if they possibly can, and doves will share when two doves meet. Uh, in, in general, games are contests of strategy. Strategy is in the genes of the players, and it's, it's really strategy that is the driver of evolution. Better strategies can invade less effective strategies, and the best strategies will resist invasion. A winning strategy will invade when it's infrequent. Uh, essentially, the most infrequent state is when a new f strategy is created, and that's when a strategy be is, is a mutant. It's a variation that never existed before in nature. And when it's rare, when it first comes into existence, it's got to be able to compete against the indigenous population. So a real test of a, of a, of a new strategy is, will it invade? Now, if a strategy becomes successful, the big question that then comes into being is, will it resist invasion from new mutants uh, when it is prominent in a population? To resist invasion, a strategy's got to do very well against itself, because a successful strategy will find a lot of copies of itself in the population. In the Hawk Dove game that we looked at, we, we really ought to look at, can there be any other mutant strategies that can enter uh, into a population of either hawks or doves, or a mixture of hawks and doves. And there's two strategies I like to talk about that uh, are very interesting and are invading strategies. One is called a bourgeois strategy. And a bourgeois strategy is, exists in contests where we uh, have a non-shareable resource. And so you're either an owner or not an owner, and both parties recognize the status of ownership. And the bourgeois strategy is to be a hawk to fight if an owner, but to be a dove if not. And uh, we find that bourgeois strategy quite a bit in nature. Another strategy uh, is the assessor strategy, and that is to sort of size up your opponent. Don't pay any attention to ownership. And if you're bigger than your opponent, be a hawk. And if you're smaller, be a dove. This is based on the basic principle that uh, Nassim Hamid is going to lose if, if he has to fight Mike Tyson. Well, we find the bourgeois strategy in nature in many, many situations. And uh, let's just look at the equations first, and let's then talk about uh, some of the animals that play the bourgeois strategy. First of all, remember the two points that we have to look at is, can you invade when you're rare, and can you resist invasion when you're common in the population? Here are the payoffs that we get 
with a bourgeois strategy against a hawk strategy uh, and the payoffs that occur. Uh, the first uh, situation is invasion, where bourgeois is going to invade. And uh, with the payoffs that we can gather by analysis, we find that the payoff of a bourgeois uh, invading uh, is better than the resident population of hawk versus hawk. Uh, if bourgeois, on the other hand, is the dominant population, uh, they get qu quite a good payoff uh, with bourgeois versus bourgeois, and a hawk who is trying to invade has a lower payoff. So he cannot actually uh, invade the population of bourgeois. And so bourgeois is a superior strategy to hawk. Therefore, as a, as a very good strategy, we would expect to find it in nature, and we do find it in nature a tremendous amount. Uh, examples that I've shown here are the mantis shrimp, which contest for small coral cavities where they live, and the resident always wins. The same thing with the speckled wood butterfly that sort of parks itself on the top of hills, and whoever gets to the hill first and, and takes over that hill, that's its residence, and it will win any fight, to, whether uh, the opponents behave in a hawk-like fashion or a dove-like fashion. The assessor strategy, uh, if we would look at the algebra of the payoffs for assessor, uh, has the same characteristics, uh, good characteristics that is, of the bourgeois strategy. That is, it's very good at invading a, a population of other strategies and it's also very good at defending itself uh, from invasion when it does become prevalent in the population. As a matter of fact, Assessor is the best of the strategies that uh, have been found for hawk dove. Uh, you might really then ask the question, well, if you have one particular strategy that's so good, uh, why don't all animals have it? And the simple answer to that is that uh, the sophistication that's required to carry out a particular strategy uh, varies from strategy to strategy. To be a hawk or dove, uh, it doesn't take very much. Uh, just execute a very simple algorithm, if you want to think of it as a computer program. Bourgeois is more complicated because you have to have the ability, the cognitive ability, to recognize ownership. An assessor uh, really takes quite a bit of cognitive skills on a relative scale. Uh, and the examples uh, that I'm going to give will show that kind of level of cognition. The first is a funnel web spider. And remember, assessor finds out who's the big guy. And what the uh, funnel web spiders do is they bounce around on the web. They have the intelligence, quote unquote, to, to do that because what happens on, on the dynamics, the physical dynamics of a, of a web, is it, it behaves uh, in a similar way to a scale. And so essentially the two spiders who are about to enter into a contest are weighing one another, and the smaller of the spiders will leave. Red deer go through uh, what's known as a sequential series of assessments, uh, starting first by sort of braying at one another, uh, then parading, uh, and then doing pushing contests. All of those uh, are assessment methods to find out who the larger, stronger animal is. What have we found out so far? Well, some rather encouraging things if we're uh, thinking about morality. Uh, first, we found out that it pays not to fight. The uh, second thing that we found out is that it also pays to honor the possession of uh, a resource. And finally, it pays to be smart. This is all seem, seems to be going in the, in the right direction as far as uh, showing that Darwin uh, ha comes up with better reasons for morality than religion does. Uh, and in the next lecture, we're going to find that in the algebra of uh, game theory, that it pays to be altruistic.